Greetings, I'm George Boston Ryan once again. A human being living in a world of beasts, beasts, beasts in human form. Let me toss another strike at President Donald Trump, at Fox News commentator Ham Hannity the Savage Nation and the other false patriots Christians conservatives and followers of this president Donald Trump who history I'm sure will record as being the worst president in the history of this nation. I'm not going to be before you long, I hope, unless I get carried away by my love for my people here in the United States of America. Think with me. You heard about the murders the shooting down of innocent American people with the gun, with the gun. May I, as a retired military veteran, say a few words to my fellow citizens here in the United States of America? I'm speaking to the Congress, that means to the House, and that means to the Senate. If you are a Democrat and you have a Republican mother, if you are a Republican and you have a Democrat father, if you are an independent and you have a Green Party member in your family, may be the one that gave birth to your only grandchild. Do you love them or do you hate them? You know, we got to wake up today, y'all. We cannot lie these tricks and subliminal images that they are giving us on TV. And I want to agree. You see, Donald Trump is not all bad. The other day he said that Hollywood should be ashamed of themselves for the violence and other things they are putting on television and in the eyes of our parents. That is so true. You know, I'm retired from the military and I was first stationed overseas in Okinawa, Japan. And while there, I learned something. I learned that there's more to TV than sex, violence, crime, and manipulating the minds of the people. And so, as a retired military veteran today, I leave you with this message. I only do this because of the deep love I have for my fellow Americans and all human beings and other life sources around the globe. And I'm waiting for the day when I will be able to meet, look at, listen to, and smell and feel the spirit of our living and eternal God who put life in the extraterrestrials. Oh yeah, I believe in extraterrestrials. Now I know some of you all don't have the power to say what you believe. But if you was free, if you was a free American, you would be able to speak like I'm speaking. No 
accolades to myself. It is the God of creation that give me the power to see through the fog that they have or that they have indoctrinated and incarcerated me in at this dispensation. But God, I'm not talking about your God, but the eternal living God allowed me to fall on my way to the bus station. And I fell out from the foolishness that had been implanted in my brain by my former slave master's teaching handed down to me through my religious leaders and my family members who just didn't know, who didn't study, who didn't put themselves in the proper position to receive the true knowledge of the real God. As a black man, we had to fight just to get a right to become a member of the Masonic Lodge. They didn't want us to have that. And even today, you got some dumb Negroes, small-minded black folk, boot-licking Uncle Toms, people that masquerade as a black person living in ignorance. We had to fight to get to, just get to wear the fez as a shriner. And you got black folk, these same people I just mentioned, they down the Masons today. Now, I'm not defending Masonry because you who know what I'm talking about and who, you who read the New Testament and the Holy Quran and the Gita among the Indians, you don't have to fight the wicked when you speak in truth to power. You don't have to fight them. And so the Masonic brotherhood had to fight just to get a right to be able to have a society that was reflected of those prophets, priests, and kings and others who travel that great land of holy divine. Look, why should I fight the Buddhist if I want to do right? Why should I fight the Hindu if I want to do right? Why should I fight the Christians if I want to do right? Why should I fight the atheists if I want to do right? Now, those who are wicked, they are going to do what they do. And Jesus, the man that you say you believe in, came face to face with the 12 apostles that he chose. In fact, I will even go as far as to say this. Jesus said to the 12 apostles that he called by name to follow and walk with him under his umbrella. Here's what my real Jesus said, not your fake Jesus. My real Jesus said to them, Let the wheat and the terrace grow together because in the end there will be a great harvest. Wait a minute, I haven't finished yet. There's another scripture that his apostles, I'm not talking about somebody who was elected. I'm not talking about somebody that was appointed. I'm talking about 12 individuals that Jesus handpicked he didn't ask his brother. He handpicked them to carry out this work of love, grace, humility, long suffering, temperance, and the like. But Jesus had enough power to turn to them one day, and here's what he said to them, if you permit me to say it. 
Have I not chosen you twelve? And one of you is a Judas? Jesus didn't call them a Democrat or a Republican crack or an ugly person or a bad person or go back where you came from. Why did you come among me? Jesus didn't do that. Because Jesus' love was so great that he loved, if you can gleam from what I'm saying, Jesus was able to glean the good from a Green Party member. Jesus was able to glean from the Independent Party. Jesus was able to glean from the Democratic Party, the Independent I mean, the, 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 the Republican Party. Jesus was able to understand that regardless of what you say, heaven and earth would pass away, but my word would stand forever. What do you mean, Brother Ryans? Don't you know that? If you walked in the shoes that I walked in, you could never be deceived by Donald Trump or anybody else that talked like that. Wait a minute, what you talking about, Brother Ryan? The Bible tells us, the Holy Quran tells us, the Torah tells us, the lost books of the Bible properly understood teaches us this. The book of the Indians, the Gita, in its great wisdom that I read because I want to be able to take heed to what God shared with the Indian people from India. So I try to study them all so I will not hate any of them. So I will not go out and drop bombs on any of them or to hate them and make them think or the world think that I got the only true religion because I'm a Baptist or because I'm a Muslim, or because I'm a Hindu, or because I'm an atheist, or because I'm a Jew, unlike you. We must speak truth to power, we who got any. And if you don't have no power, go in the corner, try to clean up your life, try to love even your enemies. The ones that Enslave your people. The one that shot your people down like wild dogs with no justice whatsoever. The people who denied you the right of freedom of movement. The people who raped your mama, your daddy, your sister, your brothers, and your daughter. Don't go out and pick up an AK-47 to shoot the ancestors down who came here through the lineage of the ancient of days and now we have their young people doing the same thing that their hands. Don't shoot them down. Don't call them any dirty names. Call them like Jesus said. Who is my brother? And who is my sister? He that doeth the will of my father. And so, if they cannot follow you in love, if they cannot follow you in long suffering, like the black man, woman and his children. You see, Dr. King tried to break this down for the world, but they didn't listen to him. They got sidetracked on his dream. Dr. King was not stuck on a dream. That was just something he had one night. Dr. King reamed out from a dream one night a work and a commission that was ordained by God for him. That's why you don't see where Dr. King talked about what others did. Dr. King didn't live about what live on what Elijah Muhammad did or what uh, Noble Drew Ali did or what uh, Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad did or 
he, he went to work. And he made a dent in time. He scarred time. You got to put a scar in time in order for your life to be worth something on this universal plane. And this is why. This is why Brother Rhymes know that God don't give a dime about you going to church every time the doors open. This is why I know that when you pray in church and holler hallelujah, hallelujah and hallelujah, Jesus could and the real Jesus and the real God could care less about that. I'm being honest with you from my heart. If I'm wrong, correct me. What Jesus wants from you is for you to get up, walk holy, stand up for right and righteousness. And when you see the wicked masquerading as saints of God, or Allah, or following the son of Amram and Yoshebel Moses, and killing and suppressing God's children, and nobody will say nothing about it, you got to be a devil yourself. If you go along with the state of Israel, the so-called state of Israel, I may add, and you see them, Shooting down, controlling, suppressing, murdering, dropping bombs on the Palestinian people who don't have a brand new shoe to throw at Netanyahu. They don't even have a good shoe to throw and hit him upside the head with. But they have tricked you. They have tricked you into believing that the spinach, that the Palestinian black people, brown people, are bad people, and that they are terrorists, and they ain't got a damn thing to terrorize a single Israeli with. The only reason you see them doing what they're doing is because their land has been taken from them, and they have been relegated to fifth class human beings and without a soul. And now let me break this to you before I close and drop my last statement on you. Now you hear the conservatives talking about we got to support and we stand with the state of Israel. I'm going to ask you all a question. I'm telling you now because it's going to come. I've studied the history of the Ethiopians and what they have in their writing that will be unfolded before the world included the Ark of the Covenant that Moses had. It's coming out, y'all, but they can't roll it out until the prophecy is fulfilled. See, God don't just deal with T.D. Jakes and the rest of these people that you dream about and give your money to. There are some of us who God revealed the truth to, and we are the ones they cannot master. And when they try to shut us up, God just in kind opened up another mind to drop this same knowledge on you, to let you know that St. John 8.32 is real and that ye shall know the truth and that the truth shall set and make you free. And you who want truth will know the truth, you will hear the truth, and you will accept the truth, and you will act on the truth, and you will be willing to die for the truth, not just to go in church and sit down and play these silly-ass games that you see them playing today, but they won't stand up for nothing of substance when our people are dying on the streets of America, being shot down by members of law enforcement and the pastors and those who you give your money to. You, they won't say a damn thing to help your children when they are being shot down mistreated in the courtroom, lied on by judges, set up by lawyers, and you don't say nothing. You can't even feel their pain. And I don't condemn you. You notice I talk about it, but I don't condemn you for doing it because if you are of the wicked one, Satan, then you are doing exactly what you're supposed to do. So you don't surprise me. I just received a call a few days ago. Just put up a video about a, a mother in Jacksonville, Florida. Why did I go? 
What made me drive over there? Wait a minute. Before I drove to Madison, I drove the uh, way cross and picked up Bobby Worthy and brought him back. And he went. And you can see all them. I'm going to release it in a few, few minutes. Why did I do that? Why didn't I just sit in the church and criticize the others who didn't come to church, who didn't clap their hands and pay 10 percent in the time and pay in the offering in benevolence offices? And they'd be back every Sunday. They'd be at Bible study. They'd be at proto school. They'd be at proof school. They'd be at everywhere. But they won't be in the street to meet the needs of God's children. Yet they say. They are servants and soldiers of God. How can you be a soldier and servant of God when you don't stand up, when you see your people dying and suffering and you don't say nothing? Why did I go to Madison, Florida years ago, went to Madison, Florida 9, when white wicked folk brought them up on bogus voting rights charges? Why did I go? Why did I go to equipment when they brought the equipment team up on bogus voting fraud charges and they was cleared of all charges after two mistrials? And, but don't bother how to talk about that. Rachel Maddow took, some of my, took one of my videos, some of my pictures, and she talked about it for a few minutes, but she didn't go all the way like she should have went. Why did I go? to Meigs, Georgia, and fight for Linda Harris? Why did I go to Camilla, Georgia, and willing to embrace uh, Rufus Davis? Why did I go to Lumpkin, Georgia, with Charles Davis and, and uh, um, Tyra, the secretary, who was overqualified for the job? Why did I go to Davis? Christopher Wright, who was shot six times and left for dead in his mama's black backyard. Why did I go to Clayton County? Why did I go to uh, Warrington, Georgia? Why did I go to Gordon, Georgia? Why did I go and ready to stand at arms to help the, 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 the council members in Davisboro that was uh, having trouble with the white police chief? Why did I go to Sparta, Georgia? Why did I go to Nichols, Georgia. Why did I go to Willacoochee, Georgia? Why did I go and stand with Olivia Coley Pearson when they brought her up on all of those bogus charges? Just like all these other places that I'm talking about. I didn't hardly see a single religious leader for the most part. We had a couple, but for the most part, those who say they love Jesus, but don't love Jesus' children. Those who will not walk three steps, but yet they say they are doing the works of Jesus. But what did Jesus do? Jesus went and he gave us. Jesus talked about resurrecting those in, from the dead. Jesus rose, raised Lazarus from the grave. Who are we willing to raise from the grave of economic uh, deterioration because they deny black folks the right to get money from the federal and local contracts and can't even get money to help pay the roads. And so why? Why, my friends? Why was I called to Douglas, Georgia? When Mary, not Mary Ann, but Olivia Coley Pearson, was just driven in the mud by the district attorney, Sam Sunk, and by the judge that denied me the right to even be in the courtroom. Man, I'm telling you, if you don't feel the pain of the people that I went and tried to give my best because they deserve no less, and what do you black folk call me? What do you send to me and say, dear dog, I'm going to send you a dry bone with no mara, mara in it. What have you done for me? Nothing. And I understand why you haven't. I don't blame you if you notice. You don't see where I condemn the equipment 10 plus 2, the Madison, Florida 9, and others who could have helped me. Or at least say thank you, Brother Ryan. Even in the Kendrick Johnson case, I was there. The daddy called me the night they found his body his son's body dead in Lyons County High School. But how many of them do you hear tell me thank you? How many of them do you see call me to do an interview on them? They let everybody, same way with every place that I've called mostly, except a few. Like Linda, Mayor Linda Harris, former Mayor Linda Harris, they got rid of her. Mayor Ann Whippaloo. Warrington and, 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 and Olivia Cole and a few more, but for the most part, they wouldn't even grant me an interview. But when the white news media 
when the white news media came, oh, they'll meet with them. And I don't ask them to meet with me. Why don't you ask them, Brother Ryans? Because I'm in a different tub from them. You see, Jesus sent me. I'm talking the real Jesus, not your Jesus. My God sent me on a real mission. And he commissioned me with the wisdom he wanted me to have. So here's what my Jesus said. My Jesus said, you work for them. You fight for them as my servants, as my servants. And when you walk into that city or you walk into that town, and if they don't receive you, and if they don't tell you thank you, after your life have been threatened, after you've been called a nigger, February the 5th, 2015, in Gordon, Georgia, while traveling a public street in the bank, they call me a nigger, among other names. And I still smile. And when I stood before city council in Gordon, Georgia, I didn't attack them like they attacked me. In fact, if you watch the video dealing with Gordon, Georgia, you'll see when I was just about this, they, them white folk got up, majority of them, got up and walked out as if though that gonna hurt my feelings. But when they walked out on me, when I am a, a rejected to be in the courtroom by the judges and the lawyers, do I hate them for that? No. You see, God prepared me for that. I'm not talking about your God, I'm talking about my God. He prepared me for that. He said that you was going to be rejected and even put to death for my name's sake. And what is his name's sake? His name, according to the scriptures as I understand it, is holy unto, the, unto God. That means clean and set free. And so you can't trip me out with that kind of foolishness. God don't have soldiers that is not prepared. When God prepares soldiers, they are ready for the grave. When we walk into the Masonic Lodge, since y'all want to condemn the Masons, when we walk into the Lodge, I'm not talking about a Lodge member, I'm talking about a real Mason. When a real mason has been touched by God, he understands that when every time that he go into the lodge, if you notice them lodges are oblong squares running from the east to the west, between the surface to the center, so between the north and the south, representing the grave. We walk into the grave to hold our meetings. So we don't mind death because we know. We know from whence we came. We know that we came from the east of Africa, better known as Ake Boulan, the land of the burnt faced people. We were brought from a westerly course and we were buried in a shallow grave with the evergreen above our head representing life eternal. Martin Luther King reached down and tried to resurrect the black man from the dead. Moses reached down and tried to reach and raise the black man from the dead. But the meat of the black race and the Hebrew Israelites, the meat cleaved from the bones. This is what they won't tell you. God called John Fitzgerald Kennedy and, John, and President Johnson, although they didn't know what they was doing. And they passed a few laws for the black man, woman and their children, and thought they had made some successes, but not too many days later, here comes Donald Trump to turn back the hands of everything that was done. Why was it done like that? Why did God allow Donald Trump to turn back the hands of the progress of the black man, woman, and their children? Because God is getting ready to fix this thing once and for all. They play games with you. But now the world is seeing what a real democracy looked like. You used to didn't know your white neighbors and what they stood for. You didn't know whether they loved you 
or hated you. But not as lying as it was when Jesus was born, when Jesus came into Jerusalem. Now the line is being drawn so straight, so straight that these white people cannot hide their inner feelings. You will know them by their works, and the works that they do will let you know who they are. And so the black man, woman, and children, you don't have to say, I respect you, I love you, and you are my friend. All you have to do now is just watch their actions. Watch how they hate you by the way they treat you and deny you equal rights that they have had for 448 years. And you came to these shores 464 years ago aboard a slave ship called Jesus, captained by one Sir John Hawkins, a slave trader. And, 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 and to go beneath that or go back further than that, we was here before the Native Americans. Black man was already in America. When you search and research, as I have done, the word admiral, the black man with the sea rovers of the sea. And if you study the history, which I've done, and I'm not a smart man, I'm one of the most ignorant of God's servant and got enough sense to know it because the more I learn, the more I understand what I don't know. The ancient sea rovers. Look at Columbus. Listen to what he said about the black man. Study. They talking about 6,000 years. 6,000 years will drop you into the Garden of Eden where the five rivers ran together, the Gihon. Those rivers ran together there in Africa. That was Africa, but they wouldn't tell you that in, in Bible study, would they? The whole Bible was unfolded in your land, black man, woman, and children. They don't want to tell you that. They won't tell you that the Caucasian race they won't tell you why they are called Caucasians. And a lot of the Caucasians won't, don't even know themselves. It's because they came and originated from the Caucasus Mountains. Don't take my word for nothing that I've said today. Do your own research. Do your own research. Don't take my word for it. And if you're wondering why I'm talking like this, because the time has come. The time has come. Matthew. 2435, say heaven and earth would pass away, but uh, my word would stand forever. Are you all mystified by the Arctic melting? Why are you so mystified? I'm not mystified. Let me explain this to y'all. I want to quit, but I can't. I know that we just left on the astrological clock. We left the two fishes. You see the people put the two fishes on the back of their car. That represents the astrological clock of Pisces with the two fishes. Yeah, Jesus took a few fishes and fed some people, but there's a new era among us. Each age on the astrological clock is about 2,500 years. But see, they told y'all don't study astrology, and so you call it satanic because you don't know, and they don't want you to know. You're, you're afraid to study astrology. You call it satanic because your former white slave master taught your pastor to say it was satanic. Wait a minute, I heard you thinking. I heard you calling me a lie. Well, let me share something to you. I'm not going to give you the answer. I just want you to go to the book of Job, the 30th chapter. And y'all notice I ain't got no script before me. God's script this in my brain, stamped it in my mind and in my heart, and I give it to you like I'm giving my alphabet. Y'all excuse me for getting emotional. But sometimes, sometimes, when God dropped you down into the tunnel of the lion's den, when God dropped you down into the fire furnace, when God dropped you down into the dry bones in the valley, when God dropped you down into the, the wilderness to be tempted of the devil and even your own black folk, there's a price you pay for that. And so let me get back on track because I got to close in the proper manner. Let me say this to you. Do you think the night that 
Kendrick Johnson was found dead, rolled up in a gym mat at Lyles County High School. Do you think it was an accident that Kendrick Johnson's father, Kenneth Johnson, called me that same night about 11 o'clock. I was in my bed asleep. But he woke me up with the phone call. And the daddy said to me, Brother Ryans, I want to talk to you tomorrow because they just killed my son at Lyons County High School. I didn't know nothing about that. That's the first I heard about it. And I told Kenneth if he bear witness with the truth, I don't know if he will or not. You see, you don't see where I interview them much. They don't walk up to me and say, Rhymes, we want to give you an interview to let you know the status of the case. But I will assure you, there are very few people and news media outlets that have done more than I've done when it comes down to individual videos to try to keep the general public informed. So why did the daddy call me that night? You don't know, but I do. You don't know why I was called two weeks ago about the noose hanging at Bathcraft business out the Industrial Boulevard and a noose was hanging from the ceiling in front of American flag. Why did they call me? Why did they call me to all these other cities? Why, when they shot Earl Evans, the black police officer in Quitman, and burned him up in the police car, why? I was in the military then. I was in the military then. Why did they call me? When James Dimp was shot in front, behind Washington, in Washington uh, funeral home in Quitman, why did they call me? And I can go on and on. This, why did they, why would they, why did they, uh, I get a call from Washington, D.C. one day, and all Britain said to me, are you George Boston Ryans? I said, yes. I, he was a white guy. I thought he was an enemy. He said, we've been watching your videos, and we're going to have 141 people from around the United States of America to go march on Walmart stores, Incorporated, and they want you to come along with us. You may be in the mix, and so we want to know if you're willing to attend. I said, yes. Of course, I went. I was later called through uh, Coffee County and Douglas at Olivia Coley Pearson, rode out to New Orleans where other people came together on this voter fraud situation. And this is why I know that when news media talk about uh, they are denying blacks the right to vote and removing blacks from office, I know they're liars because when I presented all this, these historical evidence and facts to them, they didn't even follow up on it. I want to thank Levin Alive, Levin Alive Action News who called me to come over to, to uh, Douglas with Olivia Cola Pierce and we went there. And if you go to Douglas, uh, Georgia uh, website, you will see me there being interviewed by Levin Alive Action News reporter. But you don't hear me talk about these things that much. Every now and then, I bring it to your attention because I want you to know that when we step outside of the church, when we step outside of the mosques, when we step outside of the synagogues, and when we step outside of the dungeons of Satan, and when we fall in love with God's children, then we can say that we really love God. When we are willing to die on the half of truth. And now I haven't missed my point. Y'all thought I missed it, didn't you know? Let me get back on track. You who was listening to what I said, you know I told you about astrology and the Job, the 30th chapter, in talking about, they said they don't, the churches don't want you to study astrology. But let me drop this on you as I close. Go to the 30th chapter of the book of Job and see if I'm lying or not. I want you to check out everything that I say. I don't want you to believe nothing that I say. I want you to check it out for yourself. The 30th chapter of Job says, God speaking, not Jesus, not Jeremiah, not Moses, not Abraham, not Noah. But God himself told Job, asked Job, where was you when I stretched forth this, these mysteries in the heavens? The Orion, the Pleiades, all this is dealing with astrology.
dealing with out in the stars, dealing with beyond the earth. But they told you don't study this because they don't want you to know. You see, if you don't know, you are easy to be led into Guyana. You are too, you're too easy to be led by wicked so-called religious leaders who get you in a trance and you start shouting and falling down on the floor and hollering hallelujah, hallelujah, and you get up the same fool and you're being the same tool that you was yesterday. But when you get your hands on the knowledge of the living God, then you become a new creature in God. Then you can see what Apostle Paul said when he said that I was transformed by the renewing of my mind. That means his old mind from the slave masters, the old mind of ignorance have passed away but now I have been given a new mind and if you have a new mind then you ought to walk to Isaiah 35 and 8 read Isaiah 35 and 8 and when you find about find that highway and the meaning of that highway like I did then you ought to try your best to walk down that highway and if you are killed by the forces of the wicked one say as the Muslims say Alhamdulillah Hum do Allah. Hum do Jehovah. Hum do Jesus. Hum do the son of Amram and Joseph Baal Moses. Hum do to all the prophets, priests, and kings who travel that great line of holy divine, which mean all praises are due to God. Because it is appointed unto man once to die and after that to judgment. Now for you all who joined me late, go back to the beginning of this video and listen. But above all, Go to Boston GBR on YouTube. You see, when you watch, I'm saying this to all of you because a lot of you all are tuned in live. Let me say this to you. When you go to my channel and when you watch a video, I don't care if it's but 30 seconds, when you finish watching it, call your mama, your father, your sister, brother to watch it, and then watch, and you will see that the number don't even change. It don't change because those behind the curtain in Oz don't want you to know the truth. They don't want you to know that you all are listening to me. And I don't care if the number don't change. I just want you to change. I'm, I'm not doing this for the number of views. I'm not doing this for the money. I just got a video I published. I'm going to publish it probably later tonight. I published over in Brooks County. And I had people call me, tell me, Ryan, when are you going to put that video up? We will pay you for it. I said, I don't work for pay. I don't do videos for pay. That's what I told him. And if I'm lying, God will call me a liar. But God cannot say in truth unless he is a liar himself. I don't do these videos to get views. I don't do these videos to get a dollar in my pocket or status of some type of notoriety. I do this because I talk to my people and I hope that my people, which is all people of the human race, I hope that they will take it in and share them with other people so we all can benefit do you think I am where I am? Somebody had to tell me something. My grandmother had to talk to me. And at some points I thought she was crazy. But when I stepped out into the world, called the military, and I saw military devils, well, that's another story for another time. Y'all have a nice day. And remember, when people talk like this, just remember, one day people like this will will not speak like this because of fear. They will fear death more than life. They will fear death more than the life of their wife, children, and coming generations. But there are some people, whether you believe it or not, was born into the world to do what God ordained them to do even before the foundation of the world if it is properly understood. Y'all have a nice day. May God bless you. May heaven smile upon you. And if you don't like what I say, next time you see me coming on, don't tune in. I won't think about it twice. I will say as my father said. I will say as his son said. As he rode into the Jerusalem on the back of an ass. He said, if you go among them, and if they do not receive you, shake the dust off your feet and go on about your business. You don't down them. Even when they criticize me on Facebook under a wicked website called Kendrick Johnson Face Hoax, you don't see where I come out at them. They've been coming at me for a long time. 
But all I do and all I can do is what God called me to do. And when my time is up, I want to be able to say what my grandmother said. Well done. I want to hear a voice say, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. Thou been faithful over a few things in the low world. Behold, I will make you ruler over many. And I don't want to be a ruler. I don't even want to be a leader. You cannot find nowhere in my videos or any of my writings since 1975 where I ever told anybody that I was a civil rights leader. You will hear me saying that I'm trying to lead myself and that I'm trying to control my members. And who are my members? My left arm, my right arm, my left foot, my right foot, my eyes, my brain. I'm trying to control them. I'm trying to stay out of that man's bedroom and his wife. I'm trying to stay out of that woman who belonged to you. I'm trying to leave these young children alone and not have sex with little children. I'm trying to not molest little boys. I'm trying not to uh, misdirect people in the name of Jesus. So if I can control my members, then that's one of the biggest accomplishments that I will have under my belt. So in conclusion, I want to be controlled by the overworld, which is an intelligent mind, and not the underworld, which is beneath the belly button, that bring children, hell, and destruction into our world because you control by the underworld and not the overworld. To you who abuse women, going from different women like rabbits, I'm gonna tell you, man, I'm gonna tell you, you better be careful. Not because of death, but you will end up becoming a beast in human form. That's what we have today, a lot of beasts in human form. Don't be a beast as in the book of Revelations. Be a human being and people will recognize you as a human beings by the fruits that fall from your tree. Bye-bye. We're gone.